Θα ήθελα να, να συνεχίσω και θα ήθελα να, να I, I'd like to say a few words about, about HIAS. Perhaps we will alternate between the two languages. Uh, and and so, since uh, Ambassador Chunis mentioned small villages, I also grew up in a small village and also my parents didn't finish high school or anything like that. And what I remember from the small villages actually was that at the end of the year, about this time, we always had to stand up in front of the parents and then say poems. And usually the, the, the person who was the best student will say the longest poem. Um, I, I have no longer the memory to say any long poem, and I will even read this small one, which is from my favorite poet. And it says, An aposynthesis in Elada, sto telos tha dis na so apomenun nya elia, ena beli, kena karavi, που σημαίνει ότι μάλα τόσα την ξαναφτιάχνεις. And I think this is the poem of Elitis, and with all due respect to Elitis, I would like to disagree. I would like to say that if you take Greece apart, you will also find science, you will find philosophy, you will find math, and you will find techni, and you will find technology, um, which is important for Greece. And I think if you put all these things together, then we have a chance to rebuild Greece, and of course, Building Greece, it's something which is an ongoing process, so that's uh, something that we will have work to do in the future. Uh, in starting this also, um, allow me, before uh, becoming too emotional, to say a thanks to um, the National Tekian University of Athens, which is the alma mater for many of us for hosting this event. I'd like to thank the Latsis Foundation. Also, I'd like to thank the Evgenidis Foundation for hosting us. And please allow me to say a big thanks to the person who has helped in every aspect of this effort, um, completely on a voluntary basis. Uh, we can call him at night, we can call him at any time, and right now he's taking pictures, I think. So please join me in giving a big round of applause to John Zigunakis. So what is HIAS and, and why HIAS? Um, so as the ambassador said, and I'll, as all of us know, we, we realize that today um, there is a lot of challenges, and there is a lot of challenges for the world in climate, in energy, and war. And there is also the same challenges, perhaps with special uh, features for Greece. Um, what we thought, some of us at some point, we thought that these challenges can be addressed, and I think it's the time that science can have a contribution to all of the above uh, that I mentioned. So as scientists, uh, we felt that it was not only uh, our privilege, uh, but as to quote Thukydides, we believe that we had a singular merit and we were in a position where we could contribute to helping to solve some of these problems. So we realized that there is a strong desire by the Hellenic diaspora to contribute to Greece. We believe that there is an environment among our colleagues that encourage such contributions and actually, there was a good thing in the pandemic that we could get in all these Zooms and we communicate with so many people around the world. So technology facilitates all these long distance interactions. So the pandemic, there was perhaps uh, one good thing of the pandemic. So the Hellenic diaspora, um, I think the scientists of the Hellenic diaspora uh, in particular are containing or they have access to certain type of resources in the STEM and they are world experts in science and engineering. They have been, uh, and they are advisors to national, international, and industrial organizations. Many have been educated in Greece. Many are members of national academies in the US and other institutions. And just to give you an example, each year Greek scientists in the European Union secure about 30 million euros. And I'm talking about Greek scientists that are outside uh, Greece. And I think they conduct their research in European institutions, and I think it would be a wonderful opportunity that some of these people and these funds could find their way back to Greece. We also felt that um, in order to build the highest, we have to base it on scientific excellence and, and synergy. Uh, we think that these are national resources, and we also wanted to draw on the strengths of the entire Greek scientific community without any regard to political or religious affiliations. And in that sense, we see ourselves as an independent and inclusive uh, scientific uh, organization. We are trying to build uh, collaborations, uh, international collaboration and exchanges between Greek, American, and the Greek diaspora all over the world of scientists, academics, uh, business leaders, and policy makers in areas of science and technology, including in particular energy, security, health and sustainability. 
And we also want to foster and promote scientific and academic changes, in particular for the younger um, generation. So I'd like to tell you some of the things that we have achieved over the last year and a half that we have been in existence. There have been about 11 people meeting almost every weekend uh, uh, for, for about one or two hours and brainstorming and doing different things. So what we have achieved. So at some point I realized and I, I was witness to a wonderful collaboration of about 10 uh, scientists, in particular in the area of artificial intelligence and robotics. Uh, they were in different universities around the world. People from the US, people from Switzerland, and people from Greece that they got together and they put their minds together to discuss an area which is of particular importance, and that is the area of robotics. Out of this collaboration came out a report, which I think many of you can access, and actually ended up being a publication. And I think this, was the re the, this placed the seed for creating one of the new institutes uh, in Greece, which is the Heron. And I think we have some of the people who are leading here uh, here on uh, today, so we are very proud that we contributed that such an institute is built in Greece. Uh, we have also advocated uh, to, boot, to do things like maker spaces. I think uh, Greece is very strong in theory. Uh, we have wonderful minds that are doing all sorts of theoretical work. I think it's important that we also give access to people uh, that they can do things with their hands. I think these maker spaces would be something that can engage the younger generation. And we also live in the time of the fourth industrial revolution, which is artificial intelligence and computing. And we hope that there will be bridges between Heron, for example, and another institute, uh, the Archimedes. Uh, we believe that there is a, an ecosystem that is beginning in Greece in AI and robotics. And we are very happy that we have contributed to that. We have also been in touch with people who have money, of course. And, and, and one of the people who have money is the Bodosakis Foundation, and they have been very kind to support many people, perhaps many of us, over the years with fellowships, and we have created a joint program with the Bodosakis Foundation, where for certain fellowships they contribute half of the funding, and then the highest members, um, they are uh, contributing the other half. We have also had the pleasure to establish a group of about 150 people, some of the most distinguished scientists of the Greek diaspora in US, Germany, Switzerland, uh, and other places on, of the world. Um, and we have been the recipients of their input. I value very much all the different ideas that we received. And if there is one idea um, that I uh, collected from all the feedback that we have solicited, in particular DN registration, uh, the key idea was to have a sustained presence of the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Study in Greece. So the future um, for us is indeed to create a physical home for Hayas. We want to have a physical presence and we want to have a space that will say this is the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Study. We hope that people from around the world they will have the freedom and the desire to come to this place to exchange with their colleagues on the basis of fundamental science and also that the public and all the different organizations of Greece will have access to the minds and to the knowledge of the Hellenic diaspora by being uh, open and, and inclusive in this uh, entity. We would like to see that we have engagement uh, by our members, so we very much welcome activities and initiatives, and all of us in the board, and I guess the people we know and support us, we would very much like to give everything we have in order to see more activities you will see today four panels, that these are the activities we focused on at the beginning, but of course more um, is, is uh, welcome. So I'd like to close uh, also again uh, with, a, with a poem, um, and I'll say first the poem of T.S. Eliot, which is one of my first poets, poems of, uh, of all times, which sometimes reminds me of what it is to come back to Greece. And what T.S. Eliot says is, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And if I may translate this poem in a different way and in terms of the Greek culture, there's two big journeys in the Greek culture. In a Tadoposta Elinica, Iparchi to Taxidi to Odyssea, Iparchi to Taxidi to Mega Alexandru. Taxidi to Odyssea in a Taxidi to Nostalia to Spiti. Και το ταξίδι του Μεγαλέξανδρου είναι το ταξίδι 
για την ανακάλυψη και για να, για να καταλάβεις πού φτάνει η επιστήμη και πού φτάνει ο κόσμος. Και αυτό που προσπαθεί να κάνει το Χάιας είναι να φτιάξει μια γέφυρα ανάμεσα σε αυτά τα δύο ταξίδια. Το ταξίδι του Οδυσσέα και το ταξίδι του Μεγάλη Έξανδρου. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ.